स्टूडेंट्स लेट्स कम टू माय नेक्स्ट क्लासेस दैट इज शेक्सर्स ऑनलाइन क्लासेस बायोलॉजी क्लासेस टुडे विल बी स्टार्टिंग द फर्स्ट ईयर पोर्शन ऑफ ह्यूमन फिजियोलॉजी एंड दैट रिसेंटली वी हैव कंप्लीटेड द डाइजेशन एंड अब्जॉर्बशन एंड मोर ओवर द नीट पार्ट ऑफ दैट आल्सो वी हैव कंप्लीटेड सो आई विल बी टेकिंग अप द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट इज लोकोमोशन एंड मूवमेंट्स लोकोमोशन लोकोमोशन एंड मूवमेंट the basic difference here in this is locomotion is nothing but the displacement from one place to other place animals are moving animals are migrating fine they are changing their place they are changing their location locomotion they are changing their location they are changing their position they are traveling they are going they are crawling running flying walking creeping these are all the different modes of locomotion flying swimming this is exhibited locomotion is exhibited by animals whereas movements are exhibited by both animals and as well as plants plants also exhibit movements rather plants exhibit only movements what do you mean by that they move towards the sun they move towards the light they move towards the light fine clear and sign phototrophism they move towards the soil fine clear geotrophism example like how stem grows up root goes in moreover i think you got i have to understand sunrise sunset which flower sunflower this is this is nothing but movements it will move along with the in according to the sun so sunflower that's why it is known as sunflower so plants exhibit movements whereas animals including human beings they exhibit both movement and locomotion now i am talking my tongue is moving what's happening here tongue is moving my eyebrows are moving eyes are moving my head neck is moving finger is moving so all these are known as movements this is known as movement clear this is known as movement fine whereas which is known as locomotion now look at here so here so this i am walking now so this is locomotion what is this locomotion that's the basic difference between movement and locomotion animals including human beings they exhibit both movements and locomotion for various different physiological purposes for various other functions fine to obtain food in search of other things gender migration fine many many things are there so animals exhibit human beings also exhibit both movements and locomotion since we are we are we are uh, teaching this topic under physiology we have to talk about the physiological part of that so in digestion chapter also i have told you peristaltic movement takes place in stomach with the help of smooth muscles segmentation movement takes place in small small intestine with the help of muscles now tongue is also moving with the help of muscles clear fine now so we have skeletal structures which are responsible for this uh, locomotion and movement now I, i hope you have got the difference between locomotion and movement fine so movement the study of movement is known as kinesiology what is known as <coughs> it is known as kinesiology why kinesiology because the the energy which is in motion is known as kinetic energy the energy which is at rest is known as potential energy simple concepts concepts of physics from physics to physiology from physics to physiology so that the, the the energy that is in rest is known as potential potential energy it has having that capacity that potency the potential the capability the ability while the energy that is in motion in physics also you might have studied the energy which is in motion which is in movement fine is known as kinetic energy so here the study of movement is known as kinesiology what is known as kinesiology whereas the st- this kinesiology this movement occur because of the presence of different types of muscles what we have studied in seventh chapter structural organization in animals we have studied the different types of tissues we have studied different types of muscles there when you know under muscular tissue that is smooth muscles striated muscles and cardiac muscles when the m- study of movements is known as a myology what is known as myology myology the study of movement is known as kinesiology related to kinetic energy the word derived from whereas the movement of muscles is known as a myology m y o l o g y 
Mayo refers to muscles. Mayo refers to muscles and moreover the proteins that are found present in muscles are of two types one is actin the other is known as myosin what is known as other is known as myosin so myo refers to muscle myo refers to muscle so here body movements takes place the structural uh, the, the the structures and the skeletal structures the organs movements takes place because of because of muscles and bones because of muscles and bones whereas muscles don't don't move but by themselves they move with the help of joints they move with the help of joints and they move with the help of muscles so wherever we have joint here folding takes place bending takes place this finger we can fold at three places here there is a one joint here there is another joint then here again there is a another joint so we have three joints here one is this one one is this one clear the other is this one then this one so here three joints we have so at the place of joints movement takes place this helps in locomotion in tetrapedal animals the animals which locomote on four legs four limbs tetrapods whereas human are bipedal animals what animals bipedal animals fine we show locomotion with the help of hind limbs what we generally call as legs fine so whereas the children when they move they also move with four limbs they also move with they begin with crawling with the help of belly what is known as crawling reptilia characteristic then they move with the help of four limbs mammalian characteristic other mammalian characteristic later in the course of development and growth they adapt to bipedal mode of locomotion we use only two feet that is hind legs fine to show locomotion clear in to locomotion takes place movement has to take place what has to take place movement has to take place see here if these are the four arms what they are four arms they are bent forward they are bent this movement of the arm movement of the arm so this this movement takes place here also here we have wrist joint wrist bones here movement takes place elbow fine hinge joint movement takes place shoulder bone here movement takes place i hope it's clear so forearm moves forward whereas legs hind limbs you cannot move them forward i am talking about legs clear always legs move backwards legs move backwards whereas hands or four limbs move forward clear right forward this is forward movement whereas other legs are backward movement you cannot move this hand backward like how legs move at the knee joint patella joint clear i hope it's clear so there are all the movements that takes place that help in locomotion that help in locomotion what i was telling is movements takes place the help of endoskeletal structures like muscles and bones including cartilage also helps in few joints for example like vertebral column whereas human beings and mammal in class mammalia you have studied the ex exoskeletal structures like hair nails etc in human beings and in other animals like hooves fine clear all those things hairs so here when we talk about muscles fine when we talk about muscles there are basically acha when we talk about uh, movements rather basically we have to talk about three types of movements one is known as amoeboid movement where you observe single cell or single cell or, or unicellular organisms they show movement so it is what is known as movement it is known as amoeboid movement clear then cellular movement few cells fine clear together they show movement this is known as cellular movement clear then muscular movement then what is it muscular movement with the movement that takes place due to the due to the action of function of muscles fine understand so here we have the three types of muscles three types of muscles that we have studied in seventh chapter that is structural organization animals that is one type of muscle is known as smooth muscles they are involuntary muscles they are spindle shaped pointed at both the ends having having a nucleus at the center the cytoplasm is known as sarcoplasm the cell membrane is known as sarcolemma clear whereas the cells don't divide that's the speciality of muscle cells that's why we don't call them as muscle cells we call them as muscle fibers rather because they don't show division cell division is not there though nucleus is there cytoplasm is there that is known as sarcoplasm nucleoplasm fine nucleolemma the membrane but these cells as the age of the person increase as the age of the person increases the size increases during the course of growth and development these cells do not undergo division rather they undergo development they develop they become larger they become 
thicker, they become longer. That's why we call them as muscle fibers. We don't refer them as muscle cells because though they have the characteristic of cells like possessing cytoplasm and nucleus, but yet they don't show cell division. Hence, we don't consider these cells. These are as cells, we call always them as muscles. So here, when we talk about smooth muscles, they are of spindle shape, having a single nucleus in the center. Both the ends, they are pointed, pointed. They don't have any striations, uninucleated. No striations are there. These muscles are not under the control of central nervous system. They are involuntary muscles. They are, they do not undergo fatigue. That means they don't get strain. They don't get, they do not suffer stress or fatigue. They don't get strain, there is no tiredness, fine, and they are involuntary. What do you mean by that? They are not under the control of central nervous system. They the movement of these muscles takes place whenever and wherever it is required by nature. Fine. We cannot control these movement of these muscles, like how we cannot control the movement in the stomach that is on a peristaltic movement that occurs during partial digestion occur in the stomach. Whereas after during the digestion in a small intestine, part by part of the small intestine movement takes place, it is what is known as segmentation movement during childbirth in females. In the these muscles are also found present in uterus where contraction, relaxation takes place during childbirth labor. You study in second year, third chapter, we'll talk about that in the next classes, following classes. So there also you find the presence of smooth muscles in the uterus also. So the location also has told you in stomach, intestine and uterus where they bring about movements, fine, location and function as well. Whereas the next type of muscle is what is known as striated muscles. Why they are known as striated muscles? Because they are, they have striations. What they have? Striations. What do you mean by that? They have bands. They have alternate dark and light bands known as I bands, fine, and A bands, ionizing bands and ionizing bands clear with the, with the presence of Z lines and M lines in between. Since they have dark bands and light bands, alternately we call them as striated bands, whereas they are multinucleated. You come across many nucleus here in the muscle fiber, and the position of the nuclei also vary from smooth muscles. That is, in smooth muscles, the position of the nucleus is in center, whereas in the striated muscles, the position of the nucleus is at the sides. That's why we call as peripheral in position. Nucleus is peripheral in position and multinucleated. The difference is they are cylindrical. What they are? Cylindrical multinucleated the position of the nucleus is at the periphery and they have alternate dark and light bands clear they are found present in fore limbs and hind limbs they are responsible for movement and locomotion whereas these muscles are under the control of central nervous system to understand we say that they are under the control of your will and wish whenever you feel like whenever you want whenever you you feel like moving them you move them so you while writing the exams or tests also you feel pain in these muscles in this bunch of muscles you feel pain here you feel pain so these are nothing but the skeletal muscles are nothing but the striated muscles where where the fatigue takes place we have men we have seen many students used to do this when they used to do this why because these muscles undergo fatigue they undergo fatigue where atp is exhausted not going to that physiology detail of that physiology lactic acid formation takes place my atp will be over blood supply won't be there as much as there no fresh energy no oxygen all those things will be there so they they do suffer after some constant work they suffer pain because of lack of energy and all those things so they suffer fatigue they suffer pain they undergo stress and tiredness when after a bit of relaxation again whenever there's a blood flow fresh blood flow and new energy flows in they, 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 these, these muscles get activated again and uh, they, again they are ready for work but yet they show fatigue right they are, they are under the control of central nervous system hence we call them as voluntary muscles and they show fatigue and they are found present in fore limbs and hand limbs responsible for movement and locomotion the next type of muscle, the very special type of muscle, what we call as cardiac muscles, because they are found only, they are found exclusively present only in heart, exclusively in heart, hence they are known as cardiac muscles. They are responsible for constant and rhythmic heartbeat, contraction and relaxation. Clear? So the, 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 the nature of this muscle is both their refusion of smooth and uh, straighted muscles. What is that? They have, they are cylindrical and one more very special property is, they have two special properties, they are branched. Whereas smooth muscles are unbranched, straighted muscles are unbranched, whereas these cardiac muscles are highly branched and they form network, they form what they form? Network. 
what is the property of smooth muscles what they have they have they are uninucleated and the nucleus is found present in the center and what is the property of straighted muscles they have both dark and light bands that is a bands and i bands clear so they are the fusion of smooth muscles and straighted muscles exclusively found present in heart hence we call them as cardiac muscles clear they are very special muscles they are involuntary in function you cannot control your heartbeat you might have studied in circulatory chapter circulation body fluids chapter heartbeat in children will be more will be high whereas in adults will be around 70 or 72 times per minute whereas in case of old people or senior citizens the number decreases to 68 66 per minute so as the age increases the number of heartbeats decreases and the time comes where heartbeat stops heartbeat stops clear heart never take rest but when it take rest the body will be in rest in peace the body will be in rest in peace so these muscles are involuntary muscles they do not suffer fatigue they do not show stress or strain no fatigue no tiredness involuntary they are responsible for constant heart constant and rhythmic heartbeat one more special property what i missed is they have intercalated discs what they have intercalated discs these intercalated discs are like the like between connection between the muscle one muscle fiber to other muscle fiber moreover they they provide a bit of rigidity what they provide rigidity to the to the cardiac muscles fine clear okay so this is about the types of muscles apart from that we have to study about skeletal system because our endo as i told you movements and locomotion takes place the help of structures like endoskeletal structures one is known as muscles the other is known as bones and we have a skeletal system that is our endoskeletal is bones what we refer as skeletal system you all very well know human beings have 206 bones how many bones 206 bones children will have more bones rather rather when as the age increases what happens disappear bones this will disappear and bones will vanish where they go they don't go anywhere they fuses they fuse with one another and they form different types of joints that's why more number of bones will be there in case of children that's why children body is so flexible they can take even the even the thumb of the foot into their mouth not the thumb of the hand i'm talking about the thumb of their feet or leg they take you can't take that in this age as the age increases fine clear the muscles become harder the bones become harder that's why the hands of the old people will be like like folded here like folded here so they walk like a robot they walk like a robot like this right because the bones are fused bones are fused and bones are diminished that's why in in young age adult age right you will be tall whereas as age increases even the even the height of the person shortened because of the because of the weakening of the bones and muscles shortening takes place you might have seen old people they look little short fine so bones skeletal structures we have two types of skeletal structures one is known as the one is known as the axial skeleton the other is known as appendicular skeleton the axial skeleton includes about the head region facial bones the ribs ribs in between that the sternum bone and the backbone the backbone this is what is known as axial skeleton whereas the skeleton of the hands and the legs is what is known as appendicular skeleton appendicular appendix appendicular appendages appendages fine appendicular skeleton so let's today we let's start about the uh, the skeletal of the head so this is the skull what we have here fine these are this is known as cranium cranium is nothing but the hard skull hard skull here fine so this is known as the frontal bone from here so these bones these bones clear are fused together they are fused together fused together by wavy zigzag lines what we call as switches what we call as switches why because if they are fused like this if they are joined like this you don't find that much of hardness stickiness in them but once if they are like this they are like this 
so you find more strength in that and they are more firmly fused with each other so those lines those marks with how the bones are fused to one another is what is known as switches don't get confused with ligament and uh, tendons we have discussed that in seventh chapter also so tendon is a connection between muscle and bone whereas bone to bone connection is what is known as ligament so here also fine so this skull this bone is known as frontal bone what bone frontal bone in neuro neuro the neuro control also you might have studied fore brain mid brain hind brain so frontal forehead is also known as forehead frontal bone two one pair of this half hemisphere right hemisphere left hemisphere of the brain we have two bones here they are as parietal bones whereas at the back of this we have occipital bone what we have occipital bone whereas this 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 bones here one joint will be there like this like one joint will be there like this so these are known as temporal bones what one what bones temporal bones when sphenoid bone sphenoid bone clear ethmoid bone ethmoid bone of the eyes fine clear nose bone nose bone there as cartilage comes here mandible mandible maxilla the lower jaw lower jaw then we have a u shaped bone here that bone is not attached to any other bone that's what we call as hyoid bone what bone hyoid bone so frontal parietal pair of parietal occipital con occipital condyle bones clear tempor pair of temporal bones ethmoid bone sphenoid bone nose bone maxilla mandula and hyoid bones clear in the in the in case of skull bones clear skull bones clear when we move on to ribs when we want to ribs there are two sets of ribs here these two sets of ribs are fused together they are fused together in the front side and they are joined that bone is known as sternum bone what bone sternum sternum bone the bone that joins like how we have buttons here or a zip here so it is been done designed based on how ribs are being fused here fine so in post mortem also it is similar they they, they they used to cut the sternum bone like how we used to remove unbutton our shirt or unzip the shirt or whatever it is so like how here the ribs are fused together the joint where they are fused is you know, a sternum bone clear then we have collar bone here also sternum bone there are there are 12 pair of ribs here seven first seven ribs they are directly attached to sternum hence they are known as true bones hence they are known as Uh, true, true ribs. The other ribs they are attached to seventh rib, eighth, ninth, and tenth. They are known as they are known as false ribs. They are known as false ribs. And the eleventh and twelfth pair is known as floating. They are not attached to any of the bones. Right? They will be attached to only backbone, and they will be like supporting very small bones, floating bones. So here, one to seven, the seventh pair of seven bones ribs are known as seven ribs. Ribs are known as true ribs because they are directly attached to sternum bone. and the 8th 9th and 10th rib is attached to 7th rib that's why they are known as false ribs and the 11th and 12th are known as floating first pu second pu floating 8th 9th 10th standard false because you start telling lie also in high school 1 to 7th very innocent people very innocent students very innocent guys true students true ribs 1 to 7 8th 9th 10th high school false ribs floating First P U, second P U, eleventh and twelfth rib. What is it? Floating, floating. Understand? This is the clue given so that you can remember. Whereas the next one is what we'll try to complete today. This uh, backbone also. In backbone, we have thirty-three bones. We have thirty-three bones. One as well as there are only seven. Find in the neck region, neck region. Twelve in the thoracic region. Find five in the stomach region, lumbar. Five. Find the uh, sacral. Then again four. Caucasian, Caucasian. All together, we have thirty-three bones. The seven bones which are found present in the neck region, they are known as cervical bones. What bones? Cervical vertebrae. Right? Vertebrae, vertebral column. The the brain continues into spine from medulla oblongata through foramen magnum opening. They enters into the spinal cord. The spinal cord is covered by protected by a bone known as backbone or vertebrate, vertebrata, caudata. All those things. Our vertebrata, the car, the backbone, consists of 33 bones. Each bone is known as vertebrae. In between each bone, this is one. The other one, in between this, we have here 
the calcified uh, calcified type of cartilage fine clear hyaline cartilage calcified cartilage or calcified cartilage in between these two bones there is a presence of cartilage because of the presence of the cartilage only we can move we can bend because the cartilage only helps in movement fine the shape of this backbone will be like this will be like this clear understand so i hope here i hope you are understanding seven bones will be there in neck in almost all the mammals irrespective of the size and length and all those things not going brittle when we talk about neck we'll talk about that there are cervical bones fine right? then thoracic bones thoracic cavity thoracic cavity abdominal cavity thoracic bones fine right? 12 bones are there there are as fine right? clear thoracic bones lumbar bones five are there in the stomach region sacral below the stomach region the pelvic region then four cycloid bones cycloid bones they are fused they are also fused they are also five also fused lumbar in stomach region thoracic bones are in the thoracic cavity so these are the 33 19 19 plus 10 29 29 plus 4 29 plus 4 33 bones 33 vertebrae we have in our vertebral column so last four are fused coccygeal what we call them as coccygeal right first seven bones are known as cervical bone cervical vertebrae thoracic vertebrae lumbar sacral and coccygeal coccygeal is found present below the pelvic region sacral in the pelvic region lumbar in the stomach region thoracic or thoracic in the thoracic cavity ribs fine rib region whereas seven bones in the cervical bones are in the neck region so this is the 33 bones of the vertebral column so this concludes axial skeleton clear next class we'll try to complete the appendicular skeleton and the disorders so that uh, this portion is been reduced and deleted but yet we have tried to complete uh, tomorrow most probably we'll take up one more class and we'll try to complete this you refer the material study material textbook ncert textbook whatever the doubts you have be in touch with me on uh, my whatsapp and immediately after this i will uh, take up the neat questions what material that has been issued to you from sahadri college same material i'll be using and teaching some students are asking some doubts they are calling and they are messaging i really appreciate their efforts some parents are complaining that you are not studying properly not listening to classes don't do it don't spoil yourself keep studying do take good care of yourself your health and your health of elders and others in the family keep studying god bless you good luck take care